This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about how to change polar equations into rectangular equations. Uh, in the first section, we will look at the four equations that are going to allow us to do that. Now, these four equations are trigonometric equations that allow us to make the conversion between the two uh, systems. Uh, and then the following three sections will be examples in each one. Okay, let's get started. So let's first start talking about these conversion equations. There they are. Now to understand where these conversion equations come from, you have to think of a right triangle. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's take two. Okay, so uh, let's say we're dealing with this uh, triangle. And picture, of course, here is the origin. And uh, here's theta, here's your radius of a circle, here's your x value, here's your y value. Well, you know from Pythagoras, you know that x squared plus y squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is r squared. That's our first formula. You know that the definition of tangent is opposite y over adjacent x. That's the second equation. Our uh, third equation up here well, if you take the cosine of this triangle, you know that it's adjacent over hypotenuse, or x over r. If you multiply both sides by r for that equation, you get x equals r cosine theta. Uh, likewise, if you take the sine of this triangle, it's opposite y over hypotenuse r. And if you do a little algebra, multiply both sides by r. You get that equation there, y equals r sine theta. Okay, so that's where these relationships come from. It's just right triangle trig. If you know anything about vectors, they kind of look familiar. Okay, let's dig in and let's start taking a look at some examples. All right, let's take a look at our first example. So let's say we were given this really simple polar equation. R equals three. Well, anything that has a radius of three, or all the points, the locus of points, that have a radius of three um, would be a circle. Okay, so picture a circle. We know that's the center at the origin, radius of three, obviously. So how do you deal with this? Well, if you look at that first equation, I know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, but if I take the square root of both sides, really, the left side becomes x squared plus y squared underneath a radical. So if I take the square root, I get r is equal to this. So I'm making that substitution there. That r is really the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to square both sides. Why? It gets rid of the square root. So if I square both sides, squaring be the opposite or inverse operation from square rooting, I get x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared, which is 9. And of course, this is the rectangular equation that says the exact same thing. It, if you remember anything about circles, I got nothing in parentheses, so therefore there's your x and y are 0, 0, and the radius is just the square root of that. Okay, so they say the same thing. All right, let's move on to our second example. All right, here comes example two. Let's say we were given this polar equation to secant theta. Well, the radius is equal to two secant theta. Well, first of all, secant, you know, let's stick with cosine, uh, sine, and tangent. So secant is just the reciprocal function of cosine. So really I've got two times one over cosine, which is two over cosine theta. All right, so this is kind of peculiar. Well, what I'd like to do is think of that as a proportion. I'm going to cross multiply. So I get r cosine of theta is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2. But wait, r cosine of theta, well, let's see, r cosine of theta is really equal to x. Okay, so while the other problem in example 1 was a circle, this one is a vertical line. It's a vertical line that goes through the point 2 comma 0. There you go. Okay, so if I ever see a 2 secant theta, I know it's really just a vertical line. 
All right, so here's example three, and uh, well, it's going to be a doozy. So we're going to put four over one plus sine theta. All right, so if I have the radius being defined by this fraction, um, I got to figure out what the heck this thing really is. So like I did with the last problem, I eventually cross multiplied. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to get r times 1. I'm going to get r times the sine of theta. I just multiplied r times that whole denominator. And 1 times 4 is 4. Remember that r, well, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So r has to be equal to the square root of the quantity, x squared plus y squared. I just took the square root of both sides there to get r alone. Uh, okay, I'm going to use a different strategy here, though. See the r sine theta? r sine theta is really just y. So I'm going to change this whole thing over here to y. So you got to know when to use that versus that. Okay, and the only way you get better at this is a little practice. Now I want to get this radical alone. This is the typical strategy you use when you have a radical in an equation is you get the radical alone. So I'm going to move the y over to the other side. That just means I'm subtracting y from both sides. Once you get this radical isolated, you take its inverse. Well, in this case, it's a square root. The inverse of square root is squaring. So the square and the square root cancel, so to speak. And now I've got to take 4 minus y times 4 minus y. That's what 4 minus y quantity squared means. I'm not showing you the algebra, because at this point you should know how to do this. Uh, if not, we've got videos on how to square binomials. Okay, so let's now move everything over. Um, no. No, you know what? Just remembered. I've got a y squared on both sides. How silly of me. So I'm going to subtract y squared from both sides. How silly of me. I forgot my strategy there for a moment. Okay, so now um, I've gotten rid of a y squared. Now really I just have an x squared and a y term. What I'd like to do is factor out what's in common here. If you notice, I have uh, an 8 in common, but I'm going to be a little tricky. I'm going to factor out the uh, a negative 8 because that's the coefficient of the variable term of the y term. So if I were to factor out a negative 8, negative 8 times negative 2 is 16, is positive 16. Negative 8 times y is going to be negative 8y. Okay, now this kind of looks strange having this in this form. I'm going to flip these guys around, and you could you could add in any order, right? So instead of adding negative two plus y, what I'd like to do is add y and negative two together like so. And there you go. There's my answer. So this is really a parabola. Since the x is being squared, it's a vertical parabola. Since that is a negative, it actually is frowning. So it's going to look like an upside down U, kind of like an N. Okay, so uh, where's its vertex? You can see that too. It's going to be at 0, 2. Okay, so anyway, and I know that it's going to be frowning. It's going to have that frowning shape. Anyway, it's just a parabola. And there you have it. Okay, so I wanted to show you those because you, you're, you're coming to these videos on YouTube to see this, and I thought these three examples would help you out. So please, I would really appreciate it if you were to now like this video and um, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out all the text-based lessons, interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Thank you, and... Take care.